And I am Mark Silber. I'm an author, educator, and filmmaker, photographer. I do a lot of other things in Carmel, California. And what we're going to be talking about today is the subject of your equipment. But before we do that, let me just remind you that our sponsor is Bay Photo Lab. And here's the deal. They will help you make prints. I use them all the time. And in fact, we're going to get some new prints made. I have a gallery opening very soon, and they're going to help me make some prints for that. But you can get 20% off on matted folios. You can see what a folio means. Folio is like this. Whoa, what happened here? Bah! So folio, see how it folds over like this? You have several prints in here and it has this cover. That's pretty cool. 20% off on those. You can make a collage wall. I've never made that, but that's pretty cool. A group of photos in a collage and that's somebody's wedding and so forth. Kind of interesting. And then 25% off on your first order. Let Bay Photo help you with your prints and support them, support yourself and definitely make things into prints because that's what the name of the game is, okay? All right, so let's talk about your equipment. That's the second part of this amazing decoder ring. But before we do that, see if you've ever felt confused about your equipment. Have you ever had too many cameras like this guy here? or too many lenses, or not knowing what lens you should use. What book you should refer to, well, that's easy. You should refer to this book right here. I'll make it simple for you. Advancing Your Photography. I really truly have tried to distill everything you need to know into this one book. Boom. I mean, there's other things you should know too, but it's all basically there. So if you ever felt confused, I've got the answer for you, which is, the magic decoder ring. Hey kids, <laughs> you can decode photography out of all these things, lenses and filters and lights and subject matter and visualization. What do I do first? What comes second? We figured it out. And this is our magic secret decoder. It's the cycle of photography with visualization at the center, then knowing your equipment, which is what we're gonna talk about today, then capturing, which is lighting and composition processing and finally sharing your work, which I was just talking to you about. Bay Photo can help you share your work. You gotta get it out to the world. All right, let's talk about this magical device called a camera. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by all the menus and things in your camera? I have. It's kind of crazy. Now here's the thing, before we go anywhere, this is one of the best cameras in the world. This is a Hasselblad. It was taken to the moon by the astronauts. It's been used on countless photo shoots in magazines, all sorts of places. The 501C, I love this camera. It's a work of art. Now, you know how many controls are in this camera? Let's count them. So, you know, aside from the fact that you turn this knob to advance the film, that's not really a control. What, what have we got here? We have focus. We have aperture, we have shutter speed. How many is that? Let's count them up. Focus, aperture, shutter speed. And the other control is film speed and type of film. You can control that in this camera because you can remove this back and have other backs which you, you can replace with different types of film. So we do that in digital by controlling the your ISO, we used to call it ASA, I almost called it that. It's called ISO. You can control that. So that, let's count them up. Focus, aperture, shutter, ISO. That's four control points. Now, let me ask you something. If this is the best camera in the world, considered one of the best cameras in the world, and it only has four control points, why do we now have cameras like this, why do you need to know a million settings? I love this camera. It's the Sony a7R 3 It's a real hybrid 
setup here because I've got a, an adapter so I can use my Canon lenses because I had a whole bunch of them. But let me ask you this, is it logical that photography now needs to know, you, or you need to know as a photographer, a million, len a million different things? I mean, how many are there? I bet there's 500 control points in here. So what, what happened there? Where did that all come from? Is that necessary that we go off into the weeds and forget about these four basic control points that were the standard of photography for over 100 years before a digital camera was made? Or is that kind of its own trap? Do you need to know all those menus? I don't think so. Do you need to know some of them? Yeah, some of them are helpful. There's really four key points you need to know. That's how I'm going to decode this thing for you. So first of all, my mentor when I grew up as a photographer was Henry Cartier-Bresson. And he says, for me, the camera is a sketchbook, an instrument of intuition and spontaneity. Intuition means you feel something. You have spontaneous action with it. You should be that close to your camera that when you see something, you can visualize it in a split second, get the camera set up and capture it. Spontaneity and intuition. So when we get to know our camera, you've got to know, he says you should learn, Bob Holmes said this, you should learn your camera inside and out so that it becomes intuitive. You pick it up, you don't even have to think about the settings, you just respond to what is in front of you. That is more important a billion times more important than knowing 500 different things in your menu. You got to know those four things so well that you don't even have to think about it. And th here's the deal, you guys. This is true across the boards in life. Not that there's only four things you know need to know in life. But when you're playing sports, for instance, there's a handful of things that you really have to know well. You're playing basketball. I'm not a great basketball player, so it's probably not the best analogy for me to put your way. I Let's talk about surfing. <laughs> I know surfing better than basketball. In surfing, there's a few things you need to have under control. You need to know how to look at the wave and see if it's the right wave. That's kind of like a visualization because you see the wave coming towards you. You have to be able to see if this is your wave or not. Is it going to hit you in the right place? Is it too big? Is it too small? Is it formed correctly? All those things are a judgment point. Then you have to be able to paddle to catch up with the speed of the wave. And then as soon as it catches you, you jump to your feet and turn. And from there, it's just turning on the wave. So I've named that five things and that's it to become a really good surfer, you need to know those five things. In basketball, you need to know about five things. You certainly need to know how to shoot the ball. You need to know how to dribble. You need to know how to pass, right? You, there's obviously defense and offense. You need to know those tools, but there's not that many. It's those four components of your camera that you have to know so well that it's instinctive. And this is kind of the big trap that I believe digital the digital world has brought into all of our lives, all this other stuff. Are those points helpful? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes they're very helpful, but that's on, kind of on an occasion, right? The day-to-day -day photography that you're going to do is those four things. So that's the first thing I wanna demystify in your mind. If it's all cluttered with a lot of things, let's unclutter it. So here's how you get to know your camera as a close friend. Understand each control point. Uh, look up the words in the AYP glossary in the back of the book here, my glossary, where to go? It's right here. There's a gl big glossary at the end of this book. So you need to know these words. Don't, don't go by a word you don't understand. You're just gonna be really confused about it. Study the camera in front of you. When you're reading about the camera, have it in your hands here like this. Don't try to do this in your head. Your head is going to turn into mush. You've got to have it right here. And when I'm talking about something, turn on your camera, use the knobs, control that particular point. 
so that you really have the reality. We want to develop muscle memory. And the way that you're going to do that is by doing these things and doing them over and over and over so that it becomes instinctive. Touch the knobs, the menus, the controls, practice. You got to practice your settings over and over and over until it becomes an instinctive, intuitive thing. And then you just get out and shoot and you just repeat this process over and over again. Not that different than learning a sport or a musical instrument. Now, Bob Holmes made a really good point. If we look at learning how to play the violin, you know you're not going to do that in two days, right? You know it's, it's not a complicated instrument, but it takes time to figure it out. You know, to I've never played the violin, so I have no... I can kind of judge it because I know what, you know, how a guitar works. So I can see their strings and you have to learn that it's kind of the same set of skills, but it takes months and years to really get that skill down. But why do we think that with a modern camera or an iPhone, that in one day you're going to go out and become a great photographer? Not going to happen. I mean, you might, that's great. I'm not going to say you can't do it fast, but, to really get intuitive about it and become a great photographer, it's going to take a little more work than that. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.